Hello there guys, I'm Unstable Voltage. Welcome back to part 4 of City Skylines with the After Dark expansion. And we're just trying to build our city up to the next milestone, which will be 5,500 population. Things are going quite well so far. We still have people moving in. We're making a decent amount of money. We don't have anything that's going particularly wrong in terms of our city. We're getting a few little houses here on the water side. These will have quite high land value. Unfortunately, they don't have much room to expand because of the... Why, well, you are very unhappy. Why are you unhappy? Can we not find this out? It's not actually going to tell us why they are unhappy. Well... You've got a nice little location there next to the water. You should be really happy. And especially as all of the um, poo and stuff is going in that direction. So you should be fine. Not too sure why they are upset. Either way, we still seem to have quite a lot of the industry that is lacking workers. Mainly uneducated workers. You see, they've already got a few well-educated workers. But what they actually need is uneducated workers. So sometimes it's important not to have uh, lots of schools everywhere. Because if you do have... If your education is too good, you will end up with all of your workforce becoming educated. And then the factories and the industry tends to suffer. There's our education. Yeah, we are actually over capacity a little bit on the schooling. So let's see if we can go in here and on education, we can just squeeze this down slightly. Maybe 90%. Maybe we do want a few people that are not educated. So we're still making 85 um, population per month. It is fluctuating slightly. There are certain variables involved. We're certainly making good money. We're, also, we're almost making 6000 per month, which is really nice. Now, we don't have anything being built over here. I guess there is a bit of an, a, an empty zoning area. We have a slight call for residential and commercial. Nothing particularly over the top. What we could possibly do is just put in a standard two-lane road. It, it would create another junction unfortunately which would be quite messy because of the crematorium although i guess we could just run it out from here and go straight up the middle so make sure we don't destroy the crematorium but we can put a road up there that's fine and then what we can do there is we can put some more commercial on this side and a little bit more residential on that side can we just um clear this off and then put that in as residential there we go Again, it is one of those games where you do often find yourself just playing whack-a-mole with the um, RCI indicators just to try and get a decent balance going. Uh, we are getting some people moving in up here now. Not as many as I would have hoped for. Let's just have a look down here at the demographics. Uh, we have 1,174 households, of which 1,154 are currently full. So we are pretty much at capacity. Two, almost two and a half thousand adults, one and a half thousand teens, 500 children. I like how we've got children, teens and young adults. So I'm guessing young adults, they're probably counting, I don't know, 16 to 21, maybe something like that. No seniors, but we are quite a young city here. Apparently, half of our zoning is actually industry, which is quite interesting. Maybe we want to keep the city quite clean and actually put the taxes up for the industry slightly. Let's go in there. We've only got our... Well, our industry is at 10%. I think we can afford to charge them 11%. Where's most of our money coming from? Uh, our money is massively... Well, obviously residential because we do have a lot of residents. But we're certainly making a decent amount of money from industry. It's all level 1 at the moment. But we will keep that going. Population is still going up. We're getting ever closer to that milestone, and then we'll be able to put in some of the newer buildings. Now, I actually have enough money to pay off the loan that we have, and I'm tempted to pay that loan off, but on the other hand, we are going to be spending a lot when we hit that milestone. We will get a slight boost in cash, because I believe you do get a little bit of a bonus when you hit a milestone. A couple more months, and we will be there. Again, we've still got lots of these places that are very, very short on staff, only 3 out of 12 workers. It actually has one over-educated worker. Because they've got a well-educated person and they don't have any job opportunities available for them. So I definitely think we need to get a fair amount more in terms of residential in here. So let's go ahead and um, just expand our residential area. I think we're going to go almost right down to the edge of the map almost here. And we'll go right back up to the top. That works fine. 
Maybe we need to have one cut across between those two. And I think I'm even going to go back up on this side. It will destroy a line of pylons if we go that way. But let's go up to there and join that way. That seems fine. And again, we'll have another cut across there. So this is going to be another little residential area here. We're very, very close to hitting our target right now. So let's just go and zone... Oh, I wanted that bit as well. Let's go ahead and zone all of that as residential. Not going to bother with this little bit along the edge or the stuff here on the outside. It will need water though. And for the first time in this playthrough, we are actually going to get to a point where our water um, output is going to be quite low. Um, let's just run a pipe up from here. Space already occupied. There we go. We've hit our next, uh, our next achievement, our next landmark. It does give us a little bit of money. So you won't let me run out in this direction because it's too tight a turn. But we can go this way. There we go. So all of that stuff is now covered. So let's first of all make sure that the water problem is dealt with. In fact, are we running our water at max capacity? We are not. We're not even close. So let's just go up to, say, 95%. I think we can just safely go up to 90 during the day. We'll keep our eye on it and see how things go. So this place should start to um, get built up okay. We will get rid of some of these pylons as we do get more housing. Let's just have a quick look. I think we could probably destroy that pylon there safely. That pylon should still be providing elect... Well, these are joined up here anyway. So we can get rid of um, these pylons completely now. So let's get rid of you and you and you. That gives us more building space. We don't need you. This one is still needed if we want to connect this power here up to the rest of the city. So we will leave that there. We do have a derelict building or two. Um, we do have a few places that don't have power, incidentally. Even though we do have another little wind farm up there. So uh, our electricity availability is quite short. But let's just pause things up because we now have the option of grabbing the oil power plant. The oil power plant is very expensive. But it does give us a lot more power. We did go ahead and put in our coal power plant in there. I think what we will do is we will get rid of some of these derelict buildings. But we will go ahead and get rid of one of our coal-based power plants. Let's go ahead and get rid of that. And we will then go and grab an oil power plant. We already have one selected. And we will drop that in there. I know we didn't actually have our uh, budget for power up to full. But that's fine. It doesn't really matter all that much. So what else did we get when we hit that milestone? We got our tourism specializations, which we will have a look at. We got a load of new roads. We got a hospital, police headquarters, fire station and bus station. Well, I don't think we need the bus station yet because we're not really using that many uh, buses. What we would like to get, uh, first of all, we would like to get the fire station. I think that's going to be very useful, especially as we have a lot of industry around here. Um, where we could put this potentially is right up against one of the main roads in the industry. That would allow them to reach everything quite quickly. So I think I'm going to go and put that um, over here. We'll take a few buildings out, but now we have ourselves the new fire station. That was very expensive. That was 60,000 credits of what we already had. So now we can't afford to get in hospitals and things like that. Uh, we also have the police headquarters. Most of these things are very expensive, so we will have to wait until we get a little bit more money. We have unlocked some unique buildings, again, most of which we can't afford. And uh, we've also unlocked some of the tourism and leisure buildings, which we will start to um, put in as soon as we can. Although we can't build these ones yet. Uh, what exactly was it that we did unlock just there? Let me just have a look at that again. Yeah, so we've unlocked the level 4 unique buildings. Um, tourism specialization. That's what we um, unlocked there. So it dedicates the commercial zone zones to serve the tourists by providing hotel accommodations, restaurants and other activities. It causes noise pollution, but it does attract um, tourism. So where do we go ahead and find that? Is it something that is in under policies? We have city planning now and a raging fire. Now city planning is where we actually have that encourage biking thing. This is what I find strange because city policies, city planning is only unlocked when you reach five and a half thousand population. But the encourage biking 
you actually get, and Old Town and NIMBY, you get these when you hit 1,500 population, but you can't use them until you get to 5,500 population when you unlock city planning. So it does seem a little bit strange there. Um, I have seen the thing before to actually get the tourism in. And now I cannot find where it is. I'm just going to let the game uh, play out in the background. We've probably got... Oh, there we go. We've got some stuff here under... These are the ploppable ones. These are things like the fishing pier. And these things will actually increase land value. But they don't really do an awful lot else. We could go ahead and buy some more land and expand. We're not really using all the land that we have. So we don't necessarily need to do that. Let's wait until we get some money and see if we can actually put one of these ploppables down. We could go and get some fishing tours. Doesn't cause any noise pollution. Now, how big are these things? Do they need to be connected to a road? It's not implying that it does. It looks like it can just go down in any old place. We can go ahead and get a uh, fishing pier here. It doesn't look like it needs to be next to, next to a road. It's certainly not showing that it does. So, let's just go and put this down on the waterfront. And that's just suddenly made people happy. So it's not really uh, a building that's used for anything. More more, it's just a... Um, it's like parks and trees and things. They just make people around them happy. That's all they really do. So we can still buy some new land. I'm very aware that is, it is telling me to do that. We're still getting quite a lot of demand for industry now as well. And we already have a rather large industrial area on this side of the city. I'm a little bit concerned that if we get too much more, we're going to just have a very, very polluted city indeed. So maybe I want to wait and hang back a little bit. We do still have a few places burning down. There's also a few places that are struggling with water. They do have connected pipelines, but water availability is a little bit too low. So we're in the daytime. Let's go and put our water up to... Let's put them both up to 100% by now, just to make sure we don't end up falling too far below that. Hopefully our fire departments aren't too taxed. Hazard is 28%, which is still pretty bad. Uh, what we didn't do is we, uh, we'd never bothered to extend our zone for our industrial area. And this zone basically tells them all to... Uh, gives them all smoke alarms, free smoke alarms. So that'll help reduce the potential fires. Now, I think we are going to have to increase the industry. We're getting a lot of demand for industry now. So maybe we do need to go and build some more roads off in this direction. So let's go ahead and make plans to do that. So we'll build up here. This is going to take out a big stack of pylons again, but we don't mind that too much. We'll join that up, give ourselves another junction. That pylon has now been cut off. Let's go down here. And again, we're going to go all the way down. Following the grid lines... I'm actually amazed that those roads did connect up. Sometimes they're a little bit janky when they are on the side of the uh, the water. That's probably enough for now. Let's just go ahead and zone all of this as industry. And even right here next to the residential. It's not going to make the residential area very desirable. But these are all people that we want to work in the industry. Now, we have destroyed a few pylons. These pylons are now not actually going anywhere. So, let's just make sure that we do have power connected up. So, you are actually now connected. Water, again, is going to be another issue. Although, I think most of this area is actually covered. Just a tiny little bit there that isn't. And now it is. So, we've got plenty of area for the industry to expand. We appear to be having problems with trash. Our landfill usage is at 58%. I think what the problem is more likely to be is there's not actually enough um, garbage trucks to collect all of the garbage. Now, we can't build the incinerator yet. We need a population of 8,000 before we can do that. But I think we can certainly get another landfill site. We might as well go and put it in over here near the, um, near the rest of the industry that we've just added that puts it nice and close. Again, zoning. Let's make sure that we... Uh, extend the zone out to cover all of this area with the industry make sure they all get their free smoke alarms and hopefully reduce some of the fires so which one of these was it we got did we get our upgraded fire station we did didn't we this one that's the fire station there it was the 
uh, the hospital that we couldn't get, and we also didn't get the police headquarters. Neither of them are terribly important. We didn't get the bus station either, but I don't think we really need that. If we look at tra uh, public transport figures, 96 people using the bus, 9 people using taxis. So at the moment, taxis seem quite sort of underused at the moment. It will be quite nice to put in some more bus routes, because we certainly do have some um, more areas to visit now. So let's say we go and have a bus route that covers some of this area over here. Because most of this area is just kind of left with nothing. And we can go up this street and then go and reconnect there. There we go. So we have ourselves a new route to cover that one. And then maybe we want to cover this industrial area. So let's go over this way. And we also want to go in and grab some of the new residential area that we've just built as well. I know these bus routes aren't optimal. I'm not trying to optimize the routes. I'm just trying to make sure that we've got a lot of um, places covered. So let's go ahead and join that up. So there's two new bus routes. Hopefully we can find buses running on those routes and recolor them. So let's just call you the red line. Make you the bright red line. So we've actually got quite a lot of buses on there. What we could do as well is go into the budget and just put our public transport budget for the buses up a little bit. They do seem to be getting quite a lot of use. Let's just go up to the full 100% and screw it basically. So I'm looking for buses that are blue like this one because those ones we can modify to a different colour. haven't done them yet. Let's call you the, uh, the green line. So what does that put us on with public transport? We've got the red, the purple, the green and the blue. There we go. So we actually have a few different lines there. Still making money. I mean, obviously I have just put some bus stops down, so that's cost us a little bit. But back up to 17,000. We do still have that one loan. And we owe 47,000 on that. So we could pay it off not too far away. Wouldn't take a terribly long time to do. Population is now coming up to 6,500. Next milestone is going to be 8,000. So what do we get here? We get more taxation policies, so we can set individual tax rates for individual uh, zones, well, individual districts. We'll actually unlock the metro, so we've got some more public transport. And we'll also have the leisure specialisation. Still not too sure how we activate that specialisation. I wonder if it's actually just done via zoning. That's quite the possibility. Where is our main commercial district? Um, I guess this bit here, these bits are our main commercial district. So if we were to go ahead and do some zoning, and we probably want the, the medium zone tool. If we were to go ahead and make this into, I think it's this zone as well actually. So this is our commercial district here. So what we want to do is not delete a circle out of it and not make a second district because that's just crazy is we want to select this this is victoria park so this is our commercial district so first of all we want these guys to also have the um smoke detector distribution as well still not seeing anywhere where we can actually set that um specialization though so in a lot of these things we still can't do because you need to reach a specific population Maybe it's under actual zoning. Ah, there it is. Commercial specializations. There we go. So we can make this tourism specialization, and that will be the leisure specialization. So let's say we want to make this tourism specialization. So we want to click that and click there. Now we get that little icon that appears. There's a lot of... Um, what's going on here? Hmm, hard to tell. Can't remember what that icon means, but we've just told all of our commercial stuff, at least in this area, that we want them to special... Right, that's... That bit is industry, so that should be the neighbouring zone. So, we want the zoning tool, and you need to be part of that zone, not this zone. Just trying to make sure that zones cover the right areas, but that should be our commercial zone now. And we should start seeing that we get a lot of hotels and things. And that certainly seems to be what we're getting. The Hotel Beacon. 
Now, the good thing is a lot of these places do actually require more highly educated citizens, so that's going to work out. We are still falling even... We definitely need to get another high school, and we need to bump up our education budget just slightly. So, let's go and find our education budget. Let's go and put it back up to 100%, because we are well behind on capacity. And also, let's go ahead and grab ourselves another high school and find somewhere we can put that. So we've got one school over here. We don't really have much here in the way of um, of schools. So I guess we could put a school in here. There again, we don't have any schools over here either. So let's just go and drop a school in there. So things are doing fairly well. What is your issue here? Not enough fuel. The building does not have enough fuel to function properly. Make sure trucks carrying it can reach the building from outside the city. Well, it definitely has a road connection. I'm not too sure why it is unable to receive fuel. I guess what we could think about doing is actually going over and connecting to the road on the opposite side of the city. Now, that would certainly be expensive. We're not having a blackout yet, so it does seem that the power station is certainly able to cope with the load. We're still welling to the green right now, so I'm not too concerned about that. I don't think it's really that much of an issue. But I'm quite happy with the um, population as it is right now. 6,500 is still growing strong. What are the next things that we're going to get after these? Do we get any new buildings? We get the prison. Prison is one of the new buildings that has been added. So I'd quite like to get up to the uh, 8,000 population if possible. It would be nice to go ahead and see the prison. Most of the other ones are things that we've all seen before. And of course, if we get up to this milestone, we'll also be able to go for uh, leisure specialization if we wanted to. And then, of course, there are the other things... The train station, the cargo train terminal and all. The only real one I think that is new that's further up the tech tree is the international airport. I think that's the only one that has been added other than the prison. And obviously that's quite a big population to get to there. We would definitely need to have um, more tiles. So yeah, it does seem like our royal power plant is actually struggling. What we could do... Potentially, if we wanted to. We are getting a little bit of gridlock over here. We're certainly getting traffic issues, uh, mainly because of this junction. This may, may be something that we need to um, sort out here. Maybe we need to put in an, an overpass so this traffic can move straight down the road. Or even maybe a, a traffic island or something like that. But yeah, that's certainly causing a lot of congestion. We can't even build another junction to this road because we don't own this top plot so maybe that's what we want to do maybe we want to go ahead and buy this gives us a little bit more space and would now allow us to build another sec uh, another intersection over here and we could connect it straight down to this area which would be useful and it would certainly help things reach the power station more easily we could also move the power station and put the power station closer to the main road but I think we need to get another intersection in. Now these are always a little bit tricky to do. So I'm going to pause the game. I'm going to first of all double check and see how much it is to build one of these intersections. Because they are quite expensive. So 16,000. We should just about be able to afford one. We need to go in and destroy quite a lot of road sections in order to get a space that one of them will fit into. That's probably not enough. No, see, these intersections are absolutely colossal when you actually look at them. We could have just built our own um, intersection, but I prefer doing it this way. Let's see if we can go ahead and safely take out a little bit more road on either side. We can't get rid of any more of that, unfortunately. So unless we can squeeze one in here, then we're in a little bit of trouble. So let's go ahead and get that intersection again. We can actually get one in. It is possible to rotate it, but it does tend to keep... Sna Let's turn off the... Um, can't even turn off the snapping. You won't join to that even though it's a... Right, that might be as close as we can get, actually. So if we go ahead then and use the highways tool. So we want a highway. Now, we're on left side traffic, so that didn't join up, which is a real pain. Can we get that to join up? No. So let's go ahead and just delete that section there. Very annoying. But we can join that up. We could also 
We still have some money left. Let's go and just delete a couple of sections here. And join those up. Good stuff. And that one did join up, but this one didn't. So you need to join up to there. There we go. Once again, bit of a janky road. But it does work. Now, it's not quite where we wanted it to be, because where I wanted it to be was coming over in this direction. So can we get rid of some of these sections of road here? Yes, we can. So let's get you going out over there. And let's get you going out. I don't know why that always wants to curve. Let's go ahead and get rid of you. Again, very janky, but it'll do the trick. Now, you're going in the wrong direction now, aren't you? Yeah, this road is the is the wrong way. So what we need to do is click the upgrade button and right click, and it'll just change the direction. So that should be fine. So now what we need to do is join this up to a bigger road. And I say we go into a six-lane road, maybe, and we go and join onto this four. Or maybe a four-lane road is enough, actually. So let's go for a four-lane road. Four-lane road with trees. It might make the uh, residents whose house, houses we're about to destroy uh, a little less unhappy. And we're just going to go from this road straight up the middle here. And then we are going to have... We're going into a four-lane road. So let's go ahead and get some one-way, two-lane roads. We'll do the ones with trees. Um, this one wants to join onto here. And then from here, we need to have a way for people to get off the road... I guess it doesn't need to be connected at that point. So what we could do is get this road to come off from here. And not have enough money. Let's just unpause the game slightly. And we should get enough money. There we go. So that's now connected up. And it gives us a little bit more space to build. We could go ahead and put a little bit more residential on this side. And we can get a little bit more commercial on this side. So it looks ugly, but it's going to work. Uh, basically, what it means is any traffic coming off just goes down this side of the road. Any traffic getting on can just go up and off that side of the road. This little bit of road here is actually quite redundant. What I should have done here... Yeah, it's not going to make any difference, is it? Because this bit of road isn't being used. So what I should really be doing is getting rid of that and just using a... Um, two-lane road with trees. I didn't do it on that side, which, which is what I actually intended to do. Go and connect that up. Um, we need the road upgrade. You are supposed to be one-lane road with trees. And you should all be going in the right direction. Yep, so once again, it's a little bit janky, but it will do the job. Let's unpause. And uh, we're still getting some connectivity issues up here. Apparently, we've got some road that's going in the wrong way. So we need to get highways. We need to upgrade and right-click. There we go. That bit of road now connects in the right direction. Because that would have been causing some major problems. There we go. I do like building junctions and things like this just because I know it really upsets people. All of the OCD people now screaming and throwing things at their monitor, and it is glorious. Apart from that, things are still going quite well. I'm sure it won't take as long to get up to that 8,000 population, but that will be in another video. Now, what's it saying about these things here? Not enough educated workers. So we don't have enough uneducated workers for the industry. We don't have enough educated workers for the offices and hotels, which is a little bit strange. Uh, what is our education capacity at the moment? High school is over. Elementary school is still a little bit under. What is our education on the budget right now? Budget for education is at 100%. We are probably going to need to get another high school in, most likely. Um, but I think we, we need to wait until we get universities. At what point do we get universities? University is unlocked when we hit 8,000 population. So that 8,000 population landmark is actually going to be quite important for us to sort a few of these problems out. But those are problems for another video. So thanks a lot for watching, guys. Hope you are still enjoying City Skylines After Dark. And I'll see you next time. Until then, goodbye for now.